everybody, I'm Richard Holder, and if you would be so kind, do the like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, all that stuff so you get notified when I do all this testing, because today, like every day, we're going to take a look at something very cool, and this is a Vortex Supercharger on an OG 5.7 liter LS1. So we're going to take our naturally aspirated motor that already has a cam in it, we're going to add a Vortex Supercharger, and then we're going to do something really dumb and take that good cam out and put the stock cam back in to see how much power we lose. I'm also going to show you what happens to the boost pressure. I'm also going to show you what happens to the charge temperature because we're taking temperature measurements before and after the intercooler. Lots of good data, so hey, let's get going. Okay, guys, this test goes way back. I think maybe this was the first time that I ran a certainly a Vortex supercharger on any LS motor. And this goes way back to the 5.7 liter days, <laughs> that very first 5.7 that I ran at West Tech. That happened, they happened to have a couple of crate motors when we finally got them together and put them on and got them running, thanks to Tom that worked at West Tech at the time, got them running. And so after running a bunch of NA stuff, we decided, hey, you know what? We should put boost on these. And the guys from Vortex offered up one of their V9, uh, I think V9G kits. So a supercharger and uh, an air to water intercooler, they call them after coolers, but we're going to take a look at some uh, tests that we ran with this combination. So we had our, to start things out, we had our naturally aspirated 5.7 liter, the OG LS1. This one was equipped with a comp uh, XR265 camshaft. I'll make sure to go ahead and put the specs up here. Fairly mild cam, what we would think of now as kind of a truck cam. But it was a good cam and it, uh, you know, it, it helps make power on these combinations and it did fairly well. I used that cam a lot back in the day because uh, we knew that it fitted and it worked and we knew what kind of power it made. And it seemed to work well with everything. Look, it was a blower cam, it's a turbo cam, it's a nitrous cam. It's all of those kinds of cams because it did all of that stuff. So what we did was we started out running our 5.7 liter LS1 crate motor. We ran it naturally aspirated. We equipped it with long tube headers. This was back when we were doing the, um, I think we actually had a factory ECU on here and the factory mass air meter and everything. But other than being, um, we did do a, uh, this had 241 heads on it. We did a valve spring upgrade. But other than the valve springs and the camshaft uh, and the long tube headers, everything else was stock. It still had the stock uh, LS1 intake manifold on there. It had the... Um, we did put larger injectors in this because we knew we were going to run it with a supercharger. Um, it had a, some kind of aftermarket throttle body. I think it was an AccuFab one, but it was just a, a it was the same size as a stock throttle body. So what we did was run this thing first, naturally aspirated with our small comp cam, so that we could use that as a baseline to then install the supercharger. <coughs> so run in naturally aspirated trim with our comp 265 cam. Our 5.7 liter produced 445 horsepower at 6,000 RPM and 340 foot-pounds of torque at 4,800 RPM. If you're wanting to know how well the camshaft does, I think I have videos up on that, but this thing would be around 400 horsepower, low 400s with the stock LS1 camshaft run in this kind of configuration. We also ran it as we always do with a Mazir electric water pump, no accessories and stuff. So after getting our naturally aspirated combination, you know, up and running and establishing our baseline, I always like to do that even on a junkyard motor or a new crate motor, whatever. I like to run them NA so that we know what we're starting with. We also know that the motor's in good shape and it's hitting on all the holes and it's working before we put boost on. I don't like to just put a combination together with boost and then run it there. And then if you run into problems, you don't know if it was a problem with a naturally aspirated motor or if it's just something that's a function of boost. But here's what happened after we installed our Vortex supercharger. You guys, I'm going to go ahead and swing this up here so you can kind of see what's going on. So run with a Vortex supercharger. This thing was pumping out a peak boost of 10 pounds at 6,500 RPM. And it started out making 2.6 pounds down at here, down here at 3,100 RPM and rose to, as I said, a peak of 10 pounds. Run at 10 pounds, our combination proves 600 and our supercharged LS, LS1, 675 horsepower out at 6,500 and 579 foot pounds at 5,100. So we got obviously Good gains from the supercharger. Not surprising. We know that the Vortec uh, 
has a rising boost curve. And one of the things that I wanted to point out, and this has come up in other videos that I've done, if you take a look at the way that a centrifugal supercharger works, when this motor was naturally aspirated, it made peak power at 6,000 RPM. But because of the rising boost curve and the increase in flow coming into the motor, we didn't change the intake manifold or the camshaft or anything, but the supercharged combination made peak power at a much higher engine speed. It made peak power at 6,500 RPM, and actually the peak power was still climbing. So had we continued to rev it, the peak power would have been even higher than 6,500 RPM. So by adding the centrifugal supercharger, we increased the engine speed where the motor made peak power by 500 RPM. So now this thing, you know, if you want to rev it out a little higher, it's making good power. As long as you have the, this thing had enough camshaft to do that and had enough valve spring so we didn't run into valve float. You don't see this with a turbo unless you have a rising boost curve. So you can program in a rising boost curve with an electronic boost controller with a turbo, but normally what they do is they'll come up and run, like if you have it set at 10 pounds, they'll just come up to 10 pounds and just hover around 10 pounds the whole time. So what happens then is you still make peak power at the same engine speed as you did when the motor was NA, but on a centrifugal blower, we're going to increase that. Now I want to show you what happens when we actually did this backwards because the motor started out with a camshaft in it the NA motor did. But what I did was after we had run the blower on, I wanted to see what happened with the blower and versus the stock cam and the, and the 265 cam. So let's check that out. Okay, we've taken a look at what happens when we go from our naturally aspirated cammed LS1 with our little 265 cam in it where it made 445 horsepower. And we put our Vortec supercharger with the intercooler on it and went up to 675 horsepower. But now I wanted to show you what happened when we got rid of that camshaft. I didn't do this test on the NA motor. Uh, we only did it after I had run the supercharger because I was kind of curious to see what happens. How much was the cam worth when we were running this kind of test? So what we did was we ran our motor with the with the 265 cam, made 675 horsepower, 579 foot pounds of torque. But here's what happened when we removed the comp cam and installed the stock LS1 camshaft. You can see we lost a lot of power. Not a lot. I mean, we went, uh, we lost, the peak power was down to 647 horsepower, so about 30 horsepower. Peak torque was down by 20 foot pounds to 559 foot pounds. And you could see it lost power all the way through the curve. And the interesting thing is, I've run this test many times on this. 265 cam when we've run these motors NA and this is kind of exactly what it looks like. It gains good power pretty pretty much all the way through the curve. It's usually a little bit more than this on the top um, but the cam works well NA. It works well obviously with a centrifugal blower. We have run this cam with a turbo and I've run nitrous on this and it always does the same thing. You know what the cam does, the cam does, and the other things are just kind of adding to that. So this can work well on our, on our supercharged combination, but it also shows that, hey, look, we made almost 650 horsepower with just the stock cam and the blower. Um, so things were working pretty well, but if you want to get more, they're obviously a, a cam upgrade on LS, just like it always has lots of power NA. It's also going to add a bunch of power when we have boost present. Now I want to show you what happened though, is when we did do this camshaft swap, there was a change in boost pressure as we normally see. So I'm going to go ahead and bring that up. Okay, we've got our boost curve up now, and I'm gonna go over this. Uh, this is the boost curve when we ran the, the Vortec supercharger on the 5.7 liter LS1 with the Comp 265 camshaft. And I'm gonna go ahead and move this up here out of the way. And here's what happened when we replaced the Comp cam with the stock camshaft. You can see we have a drop in boost, or, or rather an increase in boost. Um, with the smaller camshaft in the supercharger trying to pump air through there, the motor is less efficient. So what will happen is you'll see a higher boost level. And I know what you're thinking a lot of times, hey, Richard, but more boost is gonna make more power. No, actually, when we do the thing in reverse, the reverse happens. So if we have a, a motor, if, you, if you're running a motor with a stock camshaft and you put a supercharger on it and then you put a camshaft in it, the boost will come down and the power goes up. You've made the motor more efficient, so there's less resistance to this flow. And the good thing is also the blower now will flow more because it has less uh, less air, less pressure working against it, basically. So it will be able to pump more air. So it's a good thing. It's like a double win. You have 
um, a drop in boost, which is good because you lower charge temperature. We didn't have a big change in, um, I'm going to show you the charge temperature drop here in just a second, but we didn't have a big increase in, in charge temperature, but we, we did go down um, by changing the camshaft. We went down, the greatest gain was, or the greatest drop was about one full pound of boost. So we dropped it by a pound, which could drop the temperature a little bit. But the nice thing is, as I said, when we add a camshaft and we lower the boost, we uh, we increase the power. So it's like a double win. Now let's check out what happens. I, I did some measurements comparing the, the drop in temperature going through the intercooler because I wanted to see how well that Vortec intercooler was really working. Okay, now we can take a look at, as I promised, the change in charge temperature offered by the Vortec intercooler or aftercooler. This was an air to water deal and we ran uh, dyno water through it. While we were making our runs, we ran a peak of 10 pounds of boost. And as we normally see, the boost or the uh, charge temperature will increase as we go up because there's more time. But also we have an increasing uh, level of boost on here. So the higher the boost, the higher the temperature. And what we saw is we're taking two measurements. We're taking a measurement right after the supercharger between the supercharger and the intercooler and then after the intercooler in the intake manifold. So the red here on the top, this shows what the charge temperature is exiting the supercharger. It started out at 126 degrees and rose steadily to a peak of 231 degrees at 6,500 RPM. But that's what's coming out of the blower. So what's coming out of the intercooler started out at 97 degrees and rose to a peak of just 127 degrees. So the intercooler at 10 pounds knocked 100 degrees of charge temperature out of it. Obviously, that's going to do two things. It's going to help it make more power, but primarily it's going to make it much safer. So if we drop the charge temperature down 100 degrees, we make it safer, less likely to detonate. We can run the, it helps be able to run this thing on uh, pump gas. We ran this on a combination of pump gas and uh, 91 and 100. We like to be safe. <laughs> so that's why we do it. But on this combination, intercooler doing its job. This is normally what we see. It's going to knock at least 100 degrees out on, on, a, on an efficient thing. The one thing I was worried about this is as we go up in power, we'll, we'll label, we're later, uh, maybe tomorrow, going to take a look at running this combination on an LS2. And I start getting concerned on this intercooler size um, when we start going up in higher power levels because I'm concerned about the flow rate of this intercooler. But on this combination on our LS1, it worked very good. So obviously adding a Vortec and a cam on an LS1, all of that stuff works. I'm Richard Holder. Please like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. I'll keep testing.